Valley, you'll have to cross a vast forest, smelling wonderfully of wild mushrooms, still echoing with the sounds of the cavalcades of old, where the spells whispered by fairies are still audible to those able to hear them. Attracted by the irresistible aroma from its kitchens, you'll be inevitably drawn to a beautiful residence with a thatch roof and with half timbering covered with Virginia creeper. This is a former coaching inn, now used by Italian-designed metal steeds and comfortable sedans. Welcome to the Templars Inn. In the park filled with sweet-smelling flowers and rare trees, you might be taken aback by the suggestion of ancient bravery in this landscape forever marked by its Templar founders. The whole family history of the inn here began before the war. My in-laws bought this property in the late 30s. It was their country house, their hunting place. And then after the war in 1946 or 1947, they decided to leave Paris and to turn this house first into a restaurant and then into a hotel. So now it's been 19 years since I started working with my husband. The business was established, as I said, in 1946, so it was already quite well known when I came. But I think that since I've been working here, although I, I've kept the spirit of the place, the soul of the house, I believe that I've given it a new lease of life. Let's now join Mrs. Depe and her chef Fabrice Vetu in their kitchen. Now we'll make a recipe for you the layered foie gras millefeuille with slightly acid apples and celery root. Now to make this recipe, well you need of course raw duck foie gras, then some apples, Granny Smith apples preferably because they're slightly acidic, some celery root, and there it is already peeled and cut. We'll also need some walnut oil, some honey, honey from the Gatinet of course, pepper and salt, and then some wine vinegar some lovely wine vinegar, a few tomatoes, and a little bouquet of chervil. That's for the dressing, and then some chives. So you take the lobe of foie gras, weighing approximately 500 grams, you cut it into thin slices, you start by cutting a notch, and then slice into pieces of about 50 grams. Then you salt and pepper them, there, and then you put them aside into a cool place. And now using the vegetable slicer, we're going to cut the apples into round slices about three millimeters thick. We need three, and then we'll cut a fourth, and using a cutter, we'll cut out five little round pieces. Then we'll do the same with the celery root. We'll also need three large slices of celery root and five small slices. Now we can cut the chives, which we'll keep in that small recipient over there. Then we take the tomato, we dice it like this in small pieces, and then we make a vinaigrette sauce using the nut oil with the Orleans wine vinegar. We need some pepper and salt, of course, and we mix this well together. We take a large saucepan, we put in some butter, and we're going to cook the apples and the celery root in this butter. We first cook the large slices, first there, there we are, and then we add the small ones, because they cook more quickly than the large ones. We add the honey to caramelize them. The discs are now nicely caramelized, so they need to be deglazed with the Orleans vinegar. Now we've cooked the foie gras, which has already been seasoned. It's important to use a pan with no fat. No. When it's ready, you drain off the fat. And now we're going to make the warm vinaigrette. So we're going to use the saucepan in which we cook the apples and the celery root. The caramelized honey is still left at the bottom of the pan. And this needs to be deglazed with vinegar, which has been prepared and which we need to heat. Now we take an apple celery disc, place it on the bottom of the plate, then a slice of foie gras, then a slice of apple celery, a slice of foie gras, and you build up the layers. And you finish off with a foie gras apple disc. 
Now all around the plate, you have a small disc of apple and a small disc of celery root. There, all around the plate, like this. And we finish the decoration with the tomatoes on top of the millefeuille. And then the chervil, there we are. And lastly, the celery angel hair. All around. And we sprinkle the chives all around. Like this, this adds color and flavor. And we finish off with the warm vinaigrette. In the region, the least known vintages are surely the Rouillé Blanc, or a Mont Louis, for instance. These are little known wines from the Loire Valley. The Rouillé de Claude Lafont is a small vineyard in the Indre, covering about 150 hectares. So, this is a wine based on Sauvignon vine stocks, very floral, very fragrant. I think when I came here, there were very many conventional things, and I believe I've added a touch of something more casual. Casual, homely elegance, I think. I think that my chef and I like more or less the same things. My husband also has another approach. So I think these influences are visible in our menu. That's probably why our menu is pretty heterogeneous rather than homogeneous in terms of inspiration for dishes. My husband's more inspired by Mediterranean influences, whereas my chef and I are more influenced by a regional approach. Well, I'm going to show you a recipe which is a, an echo of the Mediterranean in the Sologne region. This is a mariniere of bass with virgin oil. So you take a nice, shiny bass, nice and fresh, weighing about 800 grams for two people. You take some red peppers, eggplants, some lovely tomatoes, nice and round and red, a little bouquet of basil, an onion, garlic, shallots, and a small bouquet of thyme, rosemary, some virgin olive oil, pepper, and then you add some salt. For a bass weighing about 800 grams, you can fill it two pieces of about 160 grams each. That means two portions of approximately 160 grams. Now we'll prepare the eggplant using a peeler. So we peel off the skin, which we'll use to decorate the plate. We take some virgin oil, which is going to penetrate nicely into the eggplant during the cooking process. And then we put it in a foil wrapper, we wrap it up carefully, and now it's ready to be put in the oven, where we'll leave it for 35 minutes at 150 degrees. So now we'll prepare the eggplant skins, which we'll use for decoration. You cut the skin into very, very fine strips, julienne style, and this julienne is going to be fried. Now that the eggplant is out of the oven and cooked, we're going to make the eggplant puree. So to do this, we take an onion, we slice and chop it, which is going to give more or less this. Then you take the pepper, which you've already peeled, you've already removed the skin, and you also slice this into dices like this. And you add a little garlic, which you must slice as well. Of course, we've already peeled it. And then we take the eggplant. So you take the eggplant and you empty it, and you scrape all the flesh of the eggplant, which we will then chop in order to make a puree, like this. Now we're going to prepare the tomatoes. We need two tomatoes for two people. So with one tomato, we're going to dice it like this, and as for the second tomato, we're going to slice it widthwise, this way. Now we need to prepare the herbs. We have some basil, which we're going to cut up like this, and then we prepare the thyme, and then the rosemary, and then we need to mix them all together. Now we're going to prepare the tomatoes for the garnish. We add a little olive oil into the saucepan to cook them, and while the oil is heating, 
we season the tomato slices. Wait until it's nice and hot. Remove them, put them in and cook them gently. In the boiling oil, we're going to throw in the tomato dices to season them. You season with a bit of pepper and a little salt and also a little basil. There we are. The basil gives a nice fragrance to the dish. Now we need to cook the bass. We put in some butter. We season the bass, salt, pepper. The salt is Gerhard salt. We turn it over, put it on the skin side. Once the butter is nice and frothy, you put in the bass. Cook it skin side down for three quarters of the whole cooking time. And then when you are three quarters of the way through, you turn the fish over. You turn it onto the flesh side to finish the cooking. This should last about three minutes in all. Now to make the sauce, you whip up the butter with a little bit of water. And then you drain the fillets of tomato in olive oil to recover the olive oil, which is now flavored with basil. You need about three quarters of olive oil to a quarter of whipped butter. And then you mix it all together. At the last moment, you put in the basil. There, now everything is cooked, everything is warm. All you need now is to prepare the plate. So we start by placing the tomato slices at the bottom of the plate. Then you take the eggplant caviar, you make it into a canal shape. Canals look prettier than just little piles. And then you take the diced tomato, flavored with basil. And then you arrange the pieces of bass with both fillets on top like this. Uh, on a bed of tomatoes, then you take a little sauce and to top it all off, the fried eggplant skins. And lastly, a little basil leaf. And the dish is ready to be eaten. For those who are tickled by the idea of fishing, the region also offers a large number of ponds well stocked in fish. A little farther away at Bussière, you'll find the Angler's Paradise, with its charming vegetable garden dating from the 18th century. Its fierce lion-like keepers speckled with red moss, and its small castle at the water's edge. The halls inside contain a vast collection of objects from the entire world, all of them devoted to amateur fishing. At Boussière, you can well imagine people take their fishing seriously. Now this is a dish which I adore, a gâtinée chicken in a clay crust. It's wrapped in this clay and it's put into the oven. And it cooks very, very gently. For this recipe, you need the following ingredients. The gâtinée chicken, clay from La Puseille, chanterelle mushrooms, shallots, truffles, butter, turnips, carrot tops, fennel greens, sugar peas, green beans, broad beans, onion greens, shallot greens and leek greens, 400 grams of chanterelle mushrooms, cream, salt, pepper and some butcher's string. Take a casserole, put in a knob of butter, melt it and add the shallots, saute them for two or three minutes then you add the chanterelle mushrooms for the uh, stuffing you'll need about 10 minutes at the end this is the result the stuffing once cooked then you let it cool down you take the stuffing once it's cooled season the chicken pepper it salt it inside then stuff the chicken with the preparation you take a needle and uh, with the butcher's string we're going to sew the chicken carefully so that it's sealed quite tight. 
Avec vous faites With the clay, you take it and roll it out. So it's about one centimeter thick, one piece for the top and one for the bottom. You put the first layer on a pie tin, and you take the chicken and give the clay a, a, a nice shape, like this. The clay comes from uh, la pucée. Here we cut off the excess. We take it away, and then we pinch the edges together to seal in the chicken. The chicken weighs about 1.6 kilos, so it will need to cook for one hour. We cook each vegetable separately. When the water boils, we add some salt, let it boil for two or three minutes. We start with the carrots, that takes the longest, ten minutes. Then the green beans, five minutes, the onions, five minutes as well. The broad beans, we blanch them, we remove the first skin, remove the germ and then cook them for two or three minutes. And there's the sugar piece, five minutes. Once the vegetables are cooked English style, we saute them all in frothy butter. They should be coated in the butter. And uh, at the last moment, we check the seasoning. To obtain the mushroom flavor in the chicken stock and also the chanterelle mushroom decoration and chopped shallots first, reduce. Then we add the chicken stock. This reduction process takes about 15 minutes. Then we add the cream. You need five minutes once the base is made. Like I said, once the base is made, you add a spoonful of whipped cream, some truffle juice. We check the seasoning and the finishing. We remove the string from the chicken. We place the stuffing into the casserole, heat it, cut the chicken into four portions. We arrange these onto the plates and add a little bit of salt. Then we arrange the vegetables around. We start with the leeks, the green beans and the onions. Then I'll add the fennel and the carrots and the turnips. After this, we add the sauce. We pour it over the fillet. Add the truffle slices. And there you have the Gatineau chicken in clay crust. Now to end this dinner, we propose a pineapple crisp with iced coconut cream. In order to make this recipe, you will need a pineapple, of course, Grated coconut and coconut milk. You'll also need to make a custard cream, the ice cream, with milk, egg yolks and sugar. And then, to enhance the dessert and for decorative purposes, a few raspberries, confectioner's sugar and pastry cream. Now, to make the coconut cream, well, this is coconut milk ice cream, you start by making a custard cream using the milk, egg yolks and sugar. And when this cream is cooked, you remove it from the heat and you add the coconut milk, the coconut cream, and then, to top it off, a little grated coconut. And then you place this mix into a sherbet maker to make a nice coconut ice cream. You cut a pineapple now into very fine slices, and with the juice and the leftovers, you make a pineapple sauce. On a plate, lightly sprinkled with confectioner's sugar, you arrange the pineapple, 
which you should also sprinkle with confectioner's sugar before putting it into the oven to caramelize slightly. We'll now make some small round pieces with pastry cream that we'd set aside. And to do this, we need a small cardboard stencil. You sprinkle a plate slightly with confectioner's sugar. You place the stencil on the plate. You now take a little bit of pastry cream and you spread it onto the plate on the stencil. And after five minutes cooking, you remove the grated coconut from the oven. And the pastry cream layers and the slices of pineapple. Now on the plate, you need to form three canals. You make three canals with the coconut milk ice cream and you take a little grilled coconut and you sprinkle this over the canals. There. Then you take a bit of pineapple sauce and you pour a little bit on each side. Then you take a little raspberry sauce, just a touch. There, just to decorate. Now we'll take some small pieces of pineapple and we'll arrange them onto the pastry cream layer. There. That's three. That's for the decoration. And then, very carefully, we'll take this little layer and place it in the middle. And now we arrange the small discs of grilled pineapple at each end of the canal. And then to top it all off, a little piece of pineapple. There you fix this delicately in the middle to decorate. And there you have the pineapple crisp with iced coconut milk. In this ballet of aromas and flavors, a voice expresses the very essence of the celebration, the voice of top model Linda Evangelista. I love to eat. Love French wine. Yeah, yeah. which one? Um, Bordeaux. I think one should live live life to its fullest and um, take opportunities that are given to you and go after your dreams because you die. Our taste buds ravished, overwhelmed by ineffable impressions, let us quietly leave this temple of good taste.